Welcome back guys. I need more power to my house. I need more electricity. And then you may ask why? I have the solar. Of course I have the solar. We ah. have the hole here. And I didn't measure. We are somewhere around 30 centimeters away. The problem is, will we be able to dig down there without finding more big rocks? Like that one. If I have the excavator beside you, see how big that one is. So let's start up the machine and see what we can do about it. The thing is, if I'm going to feed the house, I need to feed the house from the solar and in, and not the other way around. And currently, this, as you can see here on this side, is the garage, and this is where I have my solar. This side here, I have incoming grid, except it's not the incoming grid today. This is where I'm going to take the incoming grid tomorrow, or when I'm done. Currently, my incoming grid is 150 meters straight that way coming in from the other side, so it's a little bit problem for me. At the same time I need a little bit more electricity to my garage when I'm doing big things. And that cannot be supplied from over there. So what I need to do, I need to get electricity from the pole that is on that side, down under this big stone hench, or stone whatever, and into the house here. This one here is two and a half meter wide and it's huge. There is no way I'm picking away all the rocks and therefore I need to get under it. And now, as you can see, this side is already digged up. I'm working on the other side as you saw in the beginning. So let me show how you get under stones like this. Over there I have my incoming fiber. I dig around it. And over in that end I have another pipe. But here I have a small hole going underneath just a little bit. I took a small shovel and just digged a little bit further in. And then what we do is then is take a big pipe, one with a hole inside, and that is hefty enough that you can pound it underneath. So let's get me this under here. I have already started this, so I can pull this by hand. But you will only get so far, and this only works if you do not have too much stone underneath. And I have been standing here and pounding on this one for three evenings or something like that. And I have had big stones underneath, but I have been able to move them. 
And as you can see, I have already pounded this in a little bit. And with some luck, I am through. This pipe is three meters long, and I now have 30 centimeters left. So it's now time to go to the other side. But as I said, I have been pounding this a lot. And we are talking about two, three hours of pounding just to get it here. The piece in the beetle here, I was moving it roughly one millimeter per pound. So let's go to the other side, start up the digger and do some digging. So basically, I need to have this 60 centimeters below ground and the closer I get there, the more shallow I can have it. So I have to have it in a loop going down like that and up to the pole and up. And I will be getting the hose or whatever it's called that should be lying in the ground tomorrow. And hopefully be able to push that through where the pipe is because it's said to be the same size as this pipe. So we'll see about that. And it's a little bit too dark now. So I will be continuing tomorrow again.
and this is how it looks like now. I left a little bit of the hole here because they are coming here and we'll be tightening this to the pole. So let's see. So guys, it's time to wrap this video up. There have been a long ongoing session to get the wires rewired or the electricity rewired and the reason for that is because it takes time to get all electricians here. So let's take a look at what have been done. This is my current incoming power box for my garage. As you can see there is a wire on the right hand that goes up. This wire goes all the way around and out in that corner. That corner is also where the incoming grid power is. This will be the new cabinet for the incoming grid power. There is one meter missing and I don't have any actual ATS hooked up. So currently I have a ground protection there, a main switch and a main meter. I have incoming uh, power to the main inverter on one there and the one going back there and then I will have this manual ATS that can switch between the grid and the inverter. After that it goes out to the garage to one of my houses and then to the second or third house actually. So I will be metering everything. That one will be hooked up to the side here and then my electrician will redo all the wiring to get it properly because this is currently a mess and that needs to be sorted so let's take a look outside it's freezing cold it's like minus five and I can't walk and here we have the incoming power the incoming box and the grid power goes up in there the incoming comes from the ground so this is basically where they moved it it goes down in the ground, under, as you saw me digging, and up to this pole and to the, actually not airlines, but airlines is attached to the ground here. So that's really, really good. I have then spent some time, because as you can see here is two wires or cables, two, 5G10 and 5G6. This is where it goes out from my garage, and those will be hooked into that panel you saw earlier. And I have digged all the way here and the house to the right is the first house, that one will have the 5G6. So basically, as you can see here, we have that wire or cable coming up and it will be replacing the old one that goes up. It's long enough to go all the way inside. And if we go around here, you will see that I have been digging all the way around to the house and here you have another bunch of cables. That's the 5G10 and that will be tied into the house and be feeding the house and the rest. So guys that's basically it. It's time to wrap this video up and I hope you enjoyed to watch it. It was a, not much of an interest in terms of solar, it's preparation for what's coming but still. Thanks for watching and if you haven't subscribed do that and I'll see you next time. Bye.